Hey guys, it's the Unsmooth Criminal, and I am back. So this is going to be the 666 subscriber special. <laughs> well, it's not actually going to be a special. It's going to be a series that I hopefully you guys will enjoy and want me to keep doing. The next, the the next episode that's going to come out is going to be the end of the Azura, because I'm getting to the big fight scene that going to take like an hour to do, <laughs> but. We go to a blonde man talking to his green-haired wife, saying that he has a secret and he's been keeping it from her. And it's a really big, big secret. And he's an average build, buff, average. And she goes, what is it? And he goes, I am the number one hero. And she goes, <laughs> you look nothing like the number one hero. And he buffs up and saying, I am here. And she goes, oh. Um. Okay. And he goes, our child may have a quirk similar to mine. And she goes, what is your quirk? And he goes, my quirk, I have two actually. And I'll tell you the secret of the second one after I tell you the first one. My quirk is called Hero's Spirit. And I'll tell you the second one because my first quirk doesn't give me anything. Besides, for me to want to be a hero. It's literally all it does. The second quirk, and he explains uh, one for all. And she understands, and she vows to keep it a secret. Now. We go to when Izuku Yagi is born. He is born small, frail, premature. He has a lot of medical problems. And we skip a few years and he's three. And someone new comes into town right next door and they're the, Bak they're the Bakugo family. And Toshinori Yagi, or All Might, goes, hey, why don't we greet them to the uh, community by throwing a party for them? And Inko's like, sure, let's do that. And so they walk up to the Bakugo's residence and say, we would like to invite you to a party at our house because you're new in this area and we're here to help you with the move if you don't need anything. And Mitsuki answered the door and goes, sure, we'll show up. Uh, are you okay with our daughter coming? And they go, yeah. And they ask, how old is she? And she goes, she's three. And like, yeah, our son can get along with her. He's three, too. And they uh, they have the party. Izuku gets introduced to Bakugo. And she has a cat quirk, an explosive cat quirk. <laughs> and what you're seeing now is the build that Toshinori Yagi has. Toshinori Yagi, not All Might. All Might still has a normal cannon build. So... Izuku gets introduced with uh, Kasuki, Kasuki Bakugo, and they become friends, slowly become friends, but they become friends, and we go to the first year of middle school, and Kasuki is small for her, her age, she is picked on for having ears and a tail. And Izuku's taking none of this. And he walks in front of the bullies and goes, if you want to get to her, you're going to have to go through me. And by this point, Izuku has went from a small, frail child in the back of the class to the quiet, giant, like, uh, 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 Shoji, Shoji. Like Shoji in canon. Shoji doesn't really talk, but when he does, everybody listens because he's big and scary at some times. But he's the quiet giant in the back of the class. And they're like, yeah, no, we're good. And they walk away. And he goes, Kachan, are you okay? And she goes, yeah, thank you. And she calls him Zuzu, not Izuku or Deku. And 
at this point, this is where this timeline's gonna get messed up. I don't know when middle school starts for Japanese people, so I'm just gonna say there are 10 at that point. When they get home, there's a villain attack in their neighborhood. And the pro hero, All Might, is at the scene immediately. And Endeavor shows up and sees that All Might's having trouble with this he with this villain. And he goes, okay, everybody needs to get back and out. So he evacuates all the homes. The Bakugos, except for one home, where the villain and All Might are currently fighting at. He can't get to that home because of the wind pressure from All Might's punches and the villain's quirk. It's noon. Yay! It's noon. And he doesn't know there's someone in there, but he does know that someone is there fighting. Or he doesn't know Inko is in there, but he does know uh, All Might's in there fighting the villain. And Izuku and Bakugo both walk to the city and they see, walk to the street and they see Mitsuki and her husband out on the side of the road freaking out. And Izuku runs up asking what's going on and, and Mitsuki, he runs up and hugs them saying, good thing you're okay. There's a villain attack. And we can't find your mother. And she looks directly in Izuku's eyes. And his eyes widen. Because his dad's not around all the time. But when he is, he likes his dad. Father's, uh, father-son bonding time because his dad's a pro hero. He can't be around all the time. So, his mother took up the job of bonding with Izuku more. So, Izuku is super attached to his mother. And Izuku apparently is quirkless in this one but he's not quirkless his quirk and if anybody knows the first phantom troop to die in hunter hunter you'll know which one i'm modeling this after his quirk absolute enhancement it enhances everything about him his skin's durability his muscles, strength, anything he can enhance with some kind of enhancement, a hardening quirk, a mental fortitude quirk, a regeneration quirk. He enhances everything. And he releases this pressure because no one thought he had a quirk. He had the he didn't have the toe, but no one could find the he find a, an active quirk gene. And when you have a quirk gene that's inactive, they don't think you're ever going to activate it. So in a mindless state, he just his body grows to the size of all might in human form or in small might form, because he's currently short, but he's still a giant. So he's roughly 5'11". He, he's a giant for middle school, but he goes to 6'4", original All Might size when he gets his quirk, 6'4". And he just disappears. And I'm like, what the hell? And Baku goes like, where did Zuzu go? Where did he go? Where did he go? And she's starting to freak out like, what happened? She thinks that he might have gotten hurt because she didn't see him buff up, but Mitsuki and her husband did. And he arrives just in time to see All Might get a chunk taken out of his stomach from this villain. And he is pissed the frick off because he sees his mother's dead body. The only one who he is bonded with more than his mother is Kasuki. So, he flips out and in a blinding speed, he slams all for one in the top of the head, ripping off half of his head, 
giving him the scar. And he appears next to his mother's body and starts crying. And he passes out there and his hands covered in blood because he punched all, all for one's head off and his head starts regrowing. And that's how he got the scar for, uh, from the fight. And he's passed out on his mother's dead body. His mother's quirk was gone. Because All for One took it. It wasn't very useful, so she's, he's like, eh, not very useful. But the only thing with how powerful Izuku's quirk was going to be, because the hero spirit quirk fused with All for, or One for All, it would have ripped Izuku's body apart. The only thing keeping him together was his mother's quirk when he got it. It was a little bit more powerful, but it was the only thing that held him together. So he passed out and fell on the ground, and he's next to his mother's dead body, and All Might passes out from blood loss. And Now Masa, who was the uh, detective that to help set up the scene, runs in because he knows exactly who, who All Might is, and that this is his residence. And he runs in and he goes, crap. Because he sees Inko Midoriya, and he's met Inko Midoriya before, but he's not met his son, Izuku Yagi. And he sees this child that looks roughly 15, and he's like, what the hell just happened? So he takes All Might to the hospital, he takes him to the hospital, and he cuffs Izuku to the bed. Just to make sure. Because they he doesn't know if it's a... Uh, if he's a hero, vigilante, or villain. He doesn't know. He may, have, he, may have been, he may have been the one that did all this damage. Because... All for one is gone. He's absolutely gone. Kurgiri showed up after all for one got punched. And took him away. So the doctor's now healing him. But he'll be back. Duh. But Izuku is passed out for seven nights, or seven days and seven nights. Completely. He's in a comatose state where no one can get to him. All Might at this point has lost 10% of his body mass, so he shrunk well down. So he's getting close to small light form. And he sees his son in this state, and he's like, I, I can't face him anymore. I can't. So he runs to America, leaving behind, because he's devastated. He lost his wife. He thinks he lost his son. And the one thing that kept him in Japan is either in a comatose state or on the ground. His family. So he's like, I can't deal with this. So he runs to America. Uh, and we go to a few months later when Izuku wakes up. And he asks for his mother. And Kasuki's at his bedside. And she feels him stir. And she starts crying. Because he was comatose for a month straight. And she hugs him saying, you big idiot. And she starts crying and saying how worried she is. And he goes, I'm sorry. And Mitsuki says, uh, comes in and goes, oh, uh, hey, Zuku. Um, do you remember anything before you fell asleep? And he goes, I, rem I remember punching somebody. But that's pretty much it. Well, sorry, let me rephrase that a little. I remember feeling like I punched somebody. But that's it. And she goes, oh, God. And now Masa kept a uh, microphone in the room. So if anything was said and talked about, he would get a notification saying something was recorded. And Izuku saying that he felt like he punched somebody... Now Masa comes into the room and says, do you know who you punched? And he goes, no, I know I punched somebody and I, 
And then he remembers seeing his mother's dead body. And he starts crying. It's not just like, oh, boo-hoo, I lost somebody. No, it's, I can't breathe now how hard he's crying. He's having a panic attack and crying at the same time. So Namasa calls in a doctor, and a doctor comes in, and he, inject, and he tries to inject Izuku with a syringe. But after they put the IV drip in, nothing's ever been able to pass as through his skin. So he puts it in the IV drip, a calmer, but it goes right through his system. And it doesn't affect him. And he's still having a panic attack. And finally, Kasuki jumps on him and gives him a big hug. And he starts to calm down. And Namasa says, can you please tell me what you saw? And he goes, I saw my mother's dead body. And Namasa starts putting it together that, oh, All Might was fighting a villain, not this kid though. And he asks, how old are you? And Mitsuki goes, Izuku, you can you can rest. And she ushers him out of the room and she explains everything that's been happening in their family, in their household. She explains that his father, Toshinori Yagi, he just mentally broke when he saw his son like this and he left. And now Masa knows who Toshinori Yagi is. He knows who Inko Yagi is. But all, my, all he said was, he's going to America for a little bit. That's all he said to Namasa. So Namasa thought that he had something to do in America. Not that he was running away from his son. So Namasa gets a little mad at All Might. But he doesn't show it. And he goes, thank you for your information. I will put this in the report. And I will get the cuffs off of him immediately. And she goes, no, no, no. Don't take the cuffs completely off of him. And he goes, what do you mean? And she goes, well, apparently the quirk-canceling cuffs that you have on him is the only way that the IV can actually get into his body. And that one little area that you have a, the, around the cuff, he goes, yeah, that's the only place that they can break the skin. And he goes, oh, okay. So what do you want me to do? And she goes, uh, get him a quirk canceling bracelet. And he goes, that's going to be expensive. And she goes, I don't care. I'll pay for it. I'm a lawyer. I can pay for it. And he goes, okay. It's going to be really expensive though. And she goes, okay. And so she's like, you know what? Get him a collar. And she, he goes, a collar? And she goes, he's loyal. Right? I, my daughter's a cat, so she'll think it's cute. And he goes, so there, no, and she goes, no, 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 not yet. And he goes, yeah. She goes, yeah. I kind of pushed it on her, so it's all up to her. And he goes, oh. So I do, and she goes, yes. And they have just a very spotty agreement, and Kosuke's hearing this entire agreement from behind the door. And her face is getting redder and redder and redder. And Izuku's like, are you okay? Because he's calmed down completely and he can think straight. And she goes, yeah, I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine. And she's stuttering, being embarrassed that someone now knows that she likes Izuku. So, we now go to the next week when Izuku's finally released and he's given a choker. And they say that this choker is supposed to be on at all times. But if you get attacked, you are allowed to rip it off and use your quirk to the max. And he goes, okay, I understand. And he asks, do you know what the name of my quirk is? And the doctor walks in saying, we finally figured out what the name of your quirk is. It's called Absolute Enhancement. And it has a condition for it to unlock its full power. You're only allowed 25% at all times, unless this condition is met. And they're like, uh, okay. And Amasa hears this and goes, okay. So this is going to be a very strong kid in the future. So he goes up to Izuku and says, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he goes, I want to be like the number one hero, All Might. 
And now Martha hears this and goes, Oh, God. No, no, no. When he learns, he's going to be crushed. So, he goes, Good for you. I can help you with that. And he goes, What do you mean? And he goes, I can get you got a trainer so you can be a hero in the future. And he goes, Really? You do that for me? And he goes, Yes. Because I knew your father and I knew how much he... he uh, he would want you to do this. And he goes, oh, where is my dad anyway? He goes, he had a business trip. And Mitsuki knows otherwise. Kasuki knows otherwise. And Izuku doesn't. Because he's been asleep the entire time. So he's like, okay, when is he going to be back? And Namasa goes, he's keeping me inform- informed and updated on it. And he'll keep Mitsuki informed and updated on it. But it looks like he's not going to be back for a really long time. And he's sad that he couldn't be with you. And he goes, okay, uh... Okay. And Namasa goes, but if you have any issues, just uh, give me a letter and I'll send it to him. And he goes, okay. And he's happy that he can stay in contact with his father even though he's on a business trip because he doesn't know his father's the number one hero yet yet so we go a year into the future and Izuku's gone through the complete rehabilitation in one or two days and he's been training with a certain hero and this hero after hearing the story of what All Might did is like I need to stop treating my family like crap so he's like okay I'm going to stop training you guys. I'm training someone else. So you guys train on your own. I'm staying out of this family for a good year or two. To fix myself. So I can help with the actual family. And be part of the family. And they're like. "Uh, What happened? And he goes. The number one hero. Left his family. And he says. I don't want to be like that. So I'm fixing myself. Because I know if I keep doing this. I'm going to end up just like that. Where you guys leave me. And he explains what he came to realization. And he heard All Might's story. And they're like, uh, okay. And he calls the mental institution and say, is that Rei Todoroki, when she feels up to it, can go home. Enji Todoroki is not living there anymore. And Rei hearing that Enji left the house asks in a month can she move back with her family and they go yeah because the one thing that caused her to go violent was Enji from his torture of his children and the abuse abuse on his wife so she gets home and Enji calls her up and says I'm sorry I'll be sending someone over every once in a while to get to know Shoto and make him a normal kid now And she could talk to him perfectly fine. She's written letters to him. She's talked to him on the phone. But if she sees his face, she starts having a panic attack. So she goes, okay, I understand. So all she has for the picture on him is the white flowers that she gets every year on the same day. And she still gets that. And it's two years later after this situation with... Endeavor leaving the house and he's been living with uh, Izuku He's taught Izuku how to fight. He's taught Izuku how to build his body. He's strong So Izuku now is six foot four. It's the last year of of middle school and (sighs) He is ready to see Kasuki again Because these last four years, Endeavor says that he needs to leave all outside interruption out and focus on training so he can be a hero just like All Might. And every time he's about to say All Might, he has to stop himself, choke back the anger he feels for himself and All Might, and say it in a happy tone. And All Might, on the other hand, in America, because he's in America, is getting worse and worse. So his hero time is shortened drastically because 
of the guilt he feels from leaving his son there and alone. So he's like, I need to find a successor. So I need to do it. I'm going back to Japan to just be a teacher at UA. That's it. And he doesn't think his son is old enough to be in UA because he lost track of time and he's just been there or just been in America being the hero. And he's lost track because he puts himself into hero work so much that he loses track of time. So he not only has an hour of hero work at most when he goes back to Japan. And the sludge villain incident happens. The sludge villain this time attacks Kasuki. And Izuku flips out and pulls back his arm. His arm goes to the same thickness as when an All Might is uh, buffed up. And he does one punch. Sending the sludge villain scattering across the area. And he pulls Kasuki into hugs asking if she was okay. And she says, I'm fine, I'm fine. And being so close, and her hormones being crazy at this point, because she's a teenager, her nose starts bleeding. And he goes, are you sure? You're bleeding. And she goes, yeah, yeah. And she wipes her nose, and she pushes him away, being like, I'm fine, I'm fine. And at this point, she's met Mina, Kirishima, and Hagakure, because Hagakure still has the Cheshire quirk. I, I like Hagakure, I like that. Even though she's still in the back, she still can go invisible. She just has a Cheshire, Cheshire quirk. So. <laughs> we go to the 10-month training arc. And Izuku's like, huh, this beach is dirty. Let me clean it. And he has Kasuki help, with, help him with it. And he has her train like he did in canon. But whenever she had trouble with it, he would help just very slightly. Not completely helping her, but making sure that she can move it at a steady pace. So she gets this done within six months. And she starts on the training he did with Endeavor. So she is ripped as all hell. And it's now the... Um, entrance exams All Might's in the observation booth In small might form Because he can't be in it for more than an hour His buff form And Nezu Says we have a bunch of Good applicants here And he's flipping through the applications And to see their quirks And he sees Izuku Yagi And he goes And we have plenty And he sees Kasuki Bakugo plenty of good applicants and he pulls two out and he hands them to Eraserhead and he gives a nod and Eraserhead takes them and he looks at them and he goes well looks like All Might's going to be in uh, 1B and he goes what do you mean and he goes we have two special applicants for 1A and they're very violent towards a certain hero and he goes, who? And in these few years, uh, Kasuki's gotten the word that All Might is Toshinori Yagi from Endeavor. Because she asked, where is his father? Who is his father? Because his father's always secretive. And he's like, you can't tell him this yet. But his father is Toshinori Yagi, also known as All Might. And she hears All Might and goes, He's going to be devastated. And Endeavor, being the sympathetic man he is now, says yes. And that's why I said, don't tell him yet. I'll be right back. I got to go do something. But this is getting good. So it's roughly 10 minutes into the practical exam now. Because Izuku obviously passes the written test with flying colors. Because he's smart enough. Even though he is uh, p -p 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 taking after that one dude from the Phantom Troops who is absolutely stupid unless it comes to fighting. 
but he's smart enough. So he passes and it's a practical exam. They're in the observation room, like I already said, and Nezu is saying, All Might, he knows. And All Might looks at Nezu and goes, Who knows? And Nezu pulls out the, takes the paper from uh, Aizawa and hands it to All Might, because All Might hasn't been keeping up with his son. He has gotten the letters from a he, uh, man named Naomasa, and he knows Naomasa a little bit. He's forgotten who Naomasa is because he throws himself into work to try to forget the pain of losing his family. And he sees a name that he thought this person was dead. And he sees the name Izuku Yagi. And he starts crying, saying that he thought he was dead. And Aizawa goes, well, you thought wrong. And now he has a hatred towards you because you left him here. And he goes, I'm, and he starts saying, I'm sorry. But they're like, don't apologize to us. Apologize to him if he doesn't kill you first. And he goes, I, I know. And he goes, Nezu, are you putting in the dorms this year? And he goes, already on it. And he goes, okay, I'll tell him at the dorms. Oh, sorry, let me rephrase that. I'll tell him at training ground beta where he could let loose. And Aizawa goes, oh no, he can't let loose. His quirk prevents him from letting loose. And All Might goes, what do you mean? And Aizawa goes, you know the number two hero? He goes, yeah. Well, he's now the number one hero in Japan. And he goes, what? Because he's completely confused. And he goes, yeah. When you left your son for America, he changed his life around. He changed his attitude. He's now a nice hero instead of the endeavor we used to know. And he's saying all these things that happened when All Might left. Endeavor's now the number one hero in Japan. All Might's still the number one hero all over the world, except for Japan. Endeavor is known as the fire of kindness. Fire hero a.k.a. the Fire of Kindness, Endeavor, or Enji Todoroki, also known as Endeavor. He's known as that, instead of Endeavor, the Fire Hero. And he says that I'm training a young man who has the potential to beat out All Might with the pure power he has. And he says this in, on an interview, and Nezu puts the interview up, and he goes, Endeavor trained him like he trained himself. Because he needed an outlet for his rage. And that's the only way he could think of. But. When. When his quirk activates. While he's enraged. His quirk makes him go from 25%. To 0%. And All Might goes. What do you mean? And Nezu says. His own quirk. Hates him. When he's enraged. His quirk. Stops him from doing anything if he's enraged. And All Might goes, what do you mean? He, he stopped all for one when, when I was fighting him. And he goes, no, he didn't. He was protecting his mother. And he explains what happened because they did have security cameras and they, it took him a year to uh, fix the film. And put it back together. And the hard drives. And see what happened. They see. That. He's about to plunge his hand. Through Inko Uyagi's heart. And Izuku saw this. And went full blown punch. On. All for one. Getting him away from. 
I'm her. And he threw all for one towards All Might, actually. And All Might didn't know this. Because he was passed out from blood loss. But he still saw his son right next to his dead wife. So he kind of mentally broke. But back to present. They go, you left your son who has the strength of you when he was that young. And they go, so how does he unlock his full strength? Because if you're saying this right, he can only use 25% strength. And they go, yeah, he's as strong as you at 25% when you're at 100%. And all my goes, what? And they go, yeah. His 25% is your 100%. Your 100% is the max you can go without going beyond plus ultra, which shortens your time even longer now. And he goes, yeah. And he's getting this entire rundown of Izuku's quirk. And Nezu says the drawbacks of his quirk are that he must have to protect someone to get the full benefits. And All Might goes, what do you mean? And he goes, so we hypnotized him to see a mannequin as a real person for just one test. And we had Endeavor. We had him hit, we had uh, Izuku hypnotized so he didn't see Endeavor. He saw someone else. Use a fireball straight at that person. And he ran in front of the fireball and stopped it. Then we tested his fire uh, resistance with his quirk normally active, and it le it left one little burn on him. Endeavor's hottest flame couldn't leave a scratch when he was trying to defend someone. And All Might's like, "Wow, he's powerful!" And he, and they go, "Yeah, his normal strength can rival you in when in your prime for normal strength." And he goes, "What?" He goes, yeah, your prime normal strength is the same strength that he's ex uh, exuding now, or exerting. And all they see is Izuku, shirtless, walk out into the city. He crack his knuckles, and he leaves a giant grin on his face. Because he's gotten used to destroying robots. And now he just thinks, oh, these robots are... Or he, uh, are in the image of my father. So he goes full power, normal strength. Because he's enraged right this second. He doesn't know why, he just is. And Kasuki sees that he's going slow, and she goes, oh god. And she calls Recovery Girl saying, he's angry. And Recovery Girl goes, okay, I'll be there at the end of the test. And she goes, thank you. And Recovery Girl gets on a uh, golf cart and goes to the um, observation booth and says he's enraged and as he goes All Might this is his strength while he's enraged and All Might sees him at 50% of All Might's strength and he sees him punching through robots he has knuckles open to mid air to, to the open air and he sees bloody knuckles for him. He has no protection. His skin's really frail in this. His bones are always super hard. But his skin's really frail. He can't stop bleeding very easily if he's angry. It's a detriment to his health. Because he's angry. And he's going at fast speed. Just knocking robots down. Left and right. And people are seeing this and like, what the hell is he? And Kosuke says, Izuku, that's enough. And him hearing his name, he immediately calms down and runs back to her and goes, what? And she goes, that's enough. You got enough points. And he goes, oh, uh, I had too much fun. And she goes, I could see that. So, let everybody else do it. And if someone gets hurt or injured, you can step in. And he goes, yeah. And he sits down, and he's in the middle of the city. And he closes his eyes, just waiting. And Nezu goes, okay, release the modified zero-pointer. And All Might goes, wait, 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 modified zero-pointer? And he goes, yeah, 
It's three times faster than the normal zero pointer. It is five times stronger than the normal zero pointer, and it can withstand a hundred percent punch from you. And all Mike goes, you're going to kill kids. And he goes, no, we have Izuku Yagi, the son of what used to be the number one hero. And All Might hangs his head low because he's being called the old number one hero, the old symbol of peace. And Endeavor is currently there and says, I'm going to be the uh, hero teacher for 1A, and you're going to be the hero teacher for 1B. And All Might goes, but I'm All Might, the symbol of peace. And he goes, yeah. You were All Might, the symbol of peace. Now you're just All Might, the hero. You don't deserve the mantle of symbol of peace after what you did to your family. I did worse, and I'm slowly healing that wound with my family. And he, and he points at the screen, pointing at Izuku, who's still currently cross-legged in, in like a meditation in stance, or meditating position, a lotus sit, if you want to get more technical. And he's listening. And the modified zero pointer is a colossal behemoth of a robot. It's twice the size of a, no of a normal zero pointer. It has 15 times the armor, 13 times the hydraulics to help the speed and power. And its engine power is 500 times the other zero pointer. So. <laughs> Everybody sees this monster of a machine coming towards them, and, and it's told to not kill. No matter what, it can't kill. But it's saying, hero detected, kill on sight. It's saying this, but it's not going to kill. It's set to non-lethal violence. You can never think of, non, of, of violence not being non-lethal. But it's set to that. So it just punches somebody and sends him into a wall and then focuses on a different target. And Izuku hears the screams because he's listening for screams, not for or if someone is being attacked, like, I'm going to kill you kind of attack. No, it's the scream of someone. And he hears a scream. And it's not just a normal scream. It's a scream from Kasuki. And... His eyes go from white, because they're plain white when he's focusing, to bright green. And All Might is looking at him and sees that his eyes are bright green. And he stands up. He gets to the All Might form, and he disappears. And the building crumbles into dust underneath him. And All Might goes, uh, oh, oh, and Nezu looks at the screen with the zero point. And he's like, crap, she, she's in danger. Crap, crap, crap. And he presses the panic button. And nothing happens. He's like, crap, the panic button doesn't work. And All Might sees Nezu panicking. And he asks Nezu, what's going on? And he goes, the robot's attacking the wrong person. And... All Might goes, what do you mean? And he, and he says, after you left, he got so attached to one girl in particular that he would break and stop tanking a nuclear explosion for. And All Might goes, you, you can't survive a nuke. And they go, the Soviet Union... While you were apparently in America, joy gallivanting around being the number one hero there, attacked Japan. And this attack didn't go on global news because nothing happened. The nuke was hit out of the sky by someone who saw it coming and thought of the threat first. And All Might goes, who saw it coming? And he points at Eddie Zuku and says... His absolute enhancement improves everything about him. His hearing, his sight, his smell, his taste. Everything. So he looked up and he saw a Soviet missile coming towards 
the exact spot he's currently sitting that one day. And he had Koski next to him. And they're having a good time in the park. This was supposed to be a nuclear detonation to start a war. And he goes, I, I remember the, the threat of a war. And he goes, that threat still looms over us. But not a nuke. Want to know why? And he goes, uh, yeah. And he goes, because Izuku went into that form. And he shows the dust pile that was the building. He went into that form. Jumped all the way up to the nuke. And threw it into space. When you think about what you can do and what your son can do, do you really think the quirk singularity would have happened already? And he goes, uh, it shouldn't have happened already? And he goes, it did. And he points to the screen and says, he's the singularity. He was not supposed to survive and he was supposed to go as a catastrophic event. But... Do you know what his mother's quirk is? And he goes, uh, no, I, I never asked. I never wanted to know. And he goes, his mother's quirk. A very, very, very weak form of telekinesis. She can only pull small objects towards her. She can't push the objects. She can't lift the objects. She can only pull the objects. And he goes, okay. And he goes, that is always being exerted on to your son's cells so they will stick together like glue and Nezu explains everything that his quirk is doing and why his quirk is always active and when he is enraged his quirk actually is more harm than good to him and All Might goes oh so we go to the end of the test and Izuku is walking back to the Bakugo's residence because after Endeavor moved back in with his family after four years, because he just moved back, Izuku moved in with Kasuki. And he walks back with them and he says, Kasuki, do you think we got into 1A or did you get into a different cl class? She goes, no, I definitely got into 1A. And she still has a little bit of a cocky personality, but not completely cocky. Because if she was like that, people would be attacking her and then they would get absolutely destroyed by Izuku. So she's more of a heroic, cocky personality. Like, I'm good personality. Not the, I'm the best personality like in canon. So, we go to Mitsuki and her husband at the dining room table and Mitsuki asks, do you think they're going to enjoy this? And he goes, yeah. And they hear a knock at the door. And they're like, don't they have a key? And he goes, yeah, they do. And Mitsuki opens the door and sees a frail-looking man. And asks, who may you be? And he goes, I'm sorry. And walks away. And she's like, that was strange. And she completely forgot about Toshinori Yagi at this point. And Izuku walks back and walks into the, or walks past, past this person, and he starts feeling angry, and he doesn't know why. But subconsciously, he remembers that face. He remembers that chiseled chin, that blonde colored hair. He remembers that face from somewhere. And he clenches his fist hard. And he has a shirt on at this point. His knuckles have been healed and he has fingerless gloves on. Because if he feels angry, he clenches his fist so hard that it breaks the skin. So his fingerless gloves are like uh, gauze that are always on his hands. And he clenches his fist and he starts bleeding through his uh, gloves. And he walks into the house and goes, hey Mitsuki, or hey Auntie Mitsuki, and he waves and she sees the blood in his hand and she goes, oh God, I know who it was now. And her husband goes, who? And she goes, and she walks up to his ear and she whispers, Yagi. 
And he's about to punch the table with an explosion because he has the explosion quirk. She has the cat quirk. And he stopped himself. And uh, Kasuki's improved hearing heard her say Yagi. And she was about to explode something too, but she stopped herself because she didn't want to show Izuku that, or have Izuku figure it out that that was his father. So they eat dinner. We go a week into the future. They get their letters and they say, and Nezu says, Izuku Yagi, when you come to the dorms, I have a surprise for you. And you may be a little angry because this is not a surprise you want, but this is a surprise you need. So, your dorm assignments have been placed. Welcome to your hero academia. And I'm hoping to see you tomorrow at the dorms. And it was Nezu. Then it was someone that they love because of his attitude towards his family now and his attitude towards Izuku. Endeavor on Kasuki's um, uh, thing. So Kasuki gets Endeavor and Izuku got the principal of UA. And he's met Nezu before. So he's like, ooh, I got Nezu. And he looks at Kasuki's and he's like, oh, you got the number one hero. And she goes, yeah, I kind of wanted Nezu too. And Endeavor goes, lucky for you, you and Izuku Yagi share a room. And her face goes completely red. She, there's steam coming out of her ears. <laughs> Mitsuki overheard this and starts laughing. And her husband asks what, what's so funny. And she goes, oh, Endeavor got them this, got them to go into the same room. And he starts laughing, and he walks up to Kasuki and goes, Sleep, sweet dreams. <laughs> and he starts laughing, and she goes, I hate you. And the video continues being like, Welcome to your hero academia. And so she turns it off, and she goes, I'm going to chuck this into that arrogant flame brain's head. So hard. And he goes, what, what did he ever do to you? And she goes, nothing. That's why. And he goes, wow, so aggressive today. It's like my father came home. And he starts laughing it off, not knowing. And Mitsuki is quiet at that point. And Kasuki's like, yeah, it's like your father came home. Yeah. <laughs> And she just laughs it off, and Mitsuki's like, oh, I gotta tell him tomorrow. And so we skip to the next day. Izuku's waking up, and he sees that he's cuddling with Kasuki, and he, at some point, Kasuki sneaks into his room and sleeps with him. It, it's gotten to a point where he just doesn't care anymore. He actually prefers it when they sleep in the same room. And he's told this to Endeavor. Not anybody else. So that's why Endeavor did that. And now Moss has been, became good friends with the Bakugos. So now Moss walks in and he goes, I got a present for Izuku. And they go, ooh, I think he should be getting up right about now. And you'll hear him start in three, two, one. And you hear one, two, and He's like, you, you have him time. And she goes, well, Endeavor kind of did beat a, uh, beat a um, constant regiment into his head. So he kind of stuck with it. And now also goes, oh, uh, physically or mentally? And she goes, yes. And he goes, oh, okay. That makes sense. And he walks in and he opens the door and he sees a very skimpily clad Kasuki and a very irritated Izuku because Izuku hates being interrupted while and he is working out. So now Masa goes, just putting something down, and he walks over to the desk and 
puts it on the desk, and walks out. And Izuku continues. 3,000 push-ups later, 5,000 sit-ups later, and 1,000 pull-ups later. He walks downstairs. He has no shirt on. He's sweating like hell. And <sighs> this is going to be freaking hilarious. Mitsuki sees him and gets a nosebleed. She doesn't blush. She doesn't like him that way. She gets a nosebleed because she has a perverted mind, especially when th she thinks of her daughter and a basically nephew doing it. And Izu goes, uh, Auntie Mitsuki, are you okay? And she goes, yeah, yeah. And she wipes her nose. And <laughs> she goes, uh, is she still asleep? And he goes, yeah. Oh, I have a call. Oh, crap. My mom wants me. I'll be right back. I got to finish up this up quickly because I'm on a time restraint now because my mother wants to go on a freaking walk when I'm recording. Eh. But while he's training, he thinks of his father and how he wants to absolutely annihilate his father for leaving him and not being there for his mother's funeral. So that's why he yells the one, two, three at the top of his lungs because otherwise he wouldn't be able to get much out of training because his body is physically weak when he's mad so he trains as hard as possible hi leo cat leo just jumped on top of me and he just flopped down oh crap no you want this go go leo um, but they're currently, uh, how should I put this? <coughs> they're currently talking in the family room of the house and, <coughs> ow, Kasuki is waking up finally and she, oh crap. So she gets up and she walks downstairs and she all she has is a uh, skimpy night clothes on that are well worn. And she sees Izuku sweaty and she brought down the box that had Izuku's name on it. And she walks into the family room and says, Izuku or Zuzu forgot this. And she hands it to him and he goes, oh. Uh, sorry now, my son. He goes, it's fine. I didn't expect you to open it immediately. And he goes, well, I gotta get going. Hopefully you enjoy your gift. Bye. And he walks out, and Izuku goes, what does he mean by gift? And they go, uh -huh. And Izuku's like, oh, hopefully it's not something bad. Like, last time he gave me a gift, and Mitsuki thinks about the last time that now Masa gave him a gift, and he's like, if he gives you the same thing, I'm whooping his ass again. And he goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. You can't do that to police officers. Put him in a ring. Put you and him both have boxing gloves on. Then it's fair game. And she goes, yeah, fine. He goes, okay, hopefully. He opens it and he sees a pair of gloves. And he sees something that he probably never would have seen anywhere else. He sees a ripped up All Might poster and with a note on it saying, your father's back in town. And they feel this killing intent from Izuku and Kasuki walks up behind him and gives him a big hug. Saying, we are going to tell you today and he goes, I don't care. Show me his ass and I'll whoop it. And he's absolutely pissed. 
And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. And he goes, I don't care. I'm going to completely destroy him. And they go, we know, we know. You're stronger than him. And he goes, no. I'm as strong as him. Especially when I pissed off. And they go, yeah, your quirk does have a very weird interaction. And he goes, yeah. I still don't even know what my quirk is. You guys haven't told me. And they go, it's better that way. And he goes, that's bull crap. Understanding your quirk is the first way to train it. And they go, no, you don't need to train it. Training it means that you are physically improving it. But you don't need to improve it. So they're like, wait, you need to get out of here. You need to go to UA. We already are shipping all your stuff with a portal Kirk guy that's coming. And Kurigiri walks through the door. And he goes, I'm the mover. And Izuku sees Kurigiri. And with that fight or flight response, he goes fight because he needs to protect Kasuki. He instinctively remembers the, this guy. And he goes, you were there. And he yelled this and he goes, pardon me? And he goes, you were at my house when you killed my mother. Or that man killed my mother. And he goes, uh, I do not remember you. Or ever being in a murderous situation. Uh, and he's playing off stupid. And he goes, where is that asshole? So I could stop him from hurting anybody else. And he's angry and he wants to protect people. So it's kind of balancing out. He's, he's at 25%. Ow, crap. And he goes, um, I'm just here to move your stuff to UA. And he goes, I'm seeing through your goddamn lies. And Mitsuki's like, oh, God. If I remember correctly, the image on that portal court guy is purple. This guy is goddamn blue. So she walks up behind Izuku and... Stabs him in the neck with something. And he falls asleep right there and then. And she goes, sorry, he has a very big issue with warp quirks. And he goes, I understand. Well, I'm going to end it off there. You get to see the interaction between All Might and Izuku next episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Talk to you guys later.